I have been using the Mac for nearly 30 years, and that is really upsetting to say out loud, but it's true, and what it means, I think, is that I have a ton of experience of filtering through a whole bunch of apps on the Mac and figuring out what works for me and what little things delight me. And so in today's video, I wanted to kick off maybe a series of videos where I talk about little details in apps that really make my life better on the Mac. So without further ado, here are 10 little things in 10 apps that I find super useful and think you might enjoy as well. Okay, so the first app is 1Password. 1Password is a password manager, and there's a million things to go over here. 1Password 8 has been out for a little bit on the Mac and Windows. It just came out on iOS and Android. And the feature that I really love here is Watchtower. Watchtower gives you basically an overview of the security of your account, and mine doesn't look great right now. Um, this is a lot of old accounts and everything, but I do have a lot of accounts with weak passwords or reused ones. Um, I've got 92 pages where there's two-factor available, but I don't have that set up in one password. And so I can just dig down into any of these, and I'm blocking this out so you can't see, but it shows me a list of all the sites that match that uh, security issue that they uh, see with the passwords. And so you can just go through this, you can try to improve it, you can try to improve your score. I think it's a really good thing to just have some visibility into this sort of stuff about your passwords and be able to take action on them in 1Password 8 makes that pretty easy. Arc is an incredible new web browser that's currently in beta, and I did a video recently that's like 20 minutes of going deep on the browser, so you can see everything there. But a new feature since that video is an update to their easels feature, which is basically their way for you to just like scribble things down, write text, shapes and everything, uh, pictures, screenshots, you can create mood boards, you can collaborate here. It's a whole thing. Um, but what I really like is this new live uh, screenshot thing that you can do, where these aren't screenshots of websites, these are live views into each of them. So I have the New York Times, uh, analytics on one of my websites, Twitter notifications, the top game for the play date on itch.io, uh, Zapier usage for the month and everything. And these aren't just, uh, again, screenshots, these are live views of what's currently there right now. So I can go ahead and click into one of these, and boom, I'm on the page and I can see that is the number one game at the moment. And so this is really nice for me to just kind of like open my browser, see what's going on. I can jump into these quickly if I want. If there's stuff going on, like my Twitter notifications I need to take care of for whatever reason, I can do that. It's just really nice to have this as kind of like a live view. Uh, I call it my dashboard, but you can do really whatever you want with this. Um, it's a really interesting, cool new feature I haven't seen in other browsers. So I'm actually starting this one off by showing you Visual Studio Code instead of the app I actually want to talk about, which is Boop. Uh, so if I have some plain text that I need to format, let's say JSON, I can open Visual Studio Code, I can create a new document, I can paste it in, uh, I can go ahead and make sure this is set to JSON, I can hit Command Shift P, I can do Format Document, and okay, there it is. I can copy it, and then if I want to quit, I have to close and say don't save, quit and everything. It's not bad, but it takes a few more seconds than I want. Boop is an app that lets you format text code mostly very, very quickly. So I can paste in that same JSON, I can hit Command B to boop it, and then I could do format, and then it auto-completes to whatever you like. JSON, there you go, copy, delete, and there it is, it's gone. It doesn't ask you to save, it doesn't even have the ability to save. Uh, if I open it up again, there's nothing there. You can't save things here, it's really just for formatting text quickly. Now you've heard me talk about CleanShot X a million times on this channel. It's my favorite screenshotting and video recording app on the Mac, but what I also like about it is it has OCR built in. So if I wanna select some text on my computer that's just not text or is not selectable for some reason, I'm not out of luck. I can take a screenshot and like open it in preview and I can select it and then I can like remove the file and everything. That's kind of a pain. With Boop, I can just set a keyboard shortcut to go ahead and select some text. I hear a boop. And there we go, I've pasted that text into a text editor, whatever I like, and it just works super, super quickly. Uh, you can select it from the menu bar as well. There's capture text OCR. I just have a keyboard shortcut set up so that I can just do it very, very quickly. Hit the keyboard shortcut, select the text. There you go. And you can paste it right away. Love this little feature. Then we've got PasteBot, which is a clipboard manager, and there's a million things, again, to say about that. Um, but one of the things I really like is its ability to manipulate text. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and copy this heading and paste it into this app. Well, now it's screwed up my formatting in text edit. So let me go ahead and undo that. And I wanna paste it in, but I wanna paste it in with just plain text, just adopt the formatting of whatever's already there. So I can bring up the keyboard shortcut for PasteBot, and you can see it right here. And if I hit this button, I have all these options to manipulate the text. And so I can do uh, different things with uh, uppercase, lowercase, uh, punctuation. There's all sorts of things with like encoding it uh, for things. 
I just want to convert to plain text. So convert to plain text, paste it. There you go. All of it works lovely. Now this is QuickTime and QuickTime is built into the Mac. So it's totally free and you surely know it as a just basic video player and it works great for that, but it has a trim feature. So if you want to trim down a video, just hit command T in the app. You can scrub through to wherever you'd like to start. Hit I, go ahead and scrub or play until you want to stop. Hit O for out. And then you can go ahead and trim it and save it to your desktop. Uh, you can also grab these handles and kind of move around. If you grab and hold and just kind of stay in place, it zooms in and lets you do really granular controls over what you're trimming. Go ahead and hit trim and then you can save this to wherever you'd like. I use this like literally every single day, a few times a day. It's so useful. Now Raycast is an app launcher that I really like and it just makes you, you know, you can launch apps super, super quickly and everything. But what I really like is because it's my app launcher and I'm opening it up throughout the day all the time, I'm always seeing my meetings that are coming up. So I have this meeting that starts in nine minutes. I see it in Raycast. Uh, and basically at the time I wanna join the meeting, I can just bring up Raycast, hit enter, and it joins the video call for me. It supports all the major video platforms and is just the easiest way to get into these meetings in my opinion, because I'm already using my app launcher throughout the day. And this is just like a quick reminder, like, oh, join that meeting and I can do it right here. Now, one of the great things I think Slack has made really mainstream is how it does emoji picking. I see this all over the place now, is you can hit colon and then just type out whatever you want, and there it is. And this isn't Slack, and this is an Apple app. So Apple definitely hasn't implemented this because Apple has their own emoji picker, but I prefer Slack's, and this uh, app called Rocket brings that everywhere on your Mac. So I can go ahead and do simple smiling face or slightly smiling face, I should say. Um, I could do like a rocket. There you go. And so it's just a really quick, easy way to add emoji everywhere in the same style you do in Slack. So I love this little thing. Spark is an awesome email client for the Mac, for the iPhone and iPad, for Android. And there's so many things to talk about, but the one thing I want to mention today are shortcuts. So if you like keyboard shortcuts in your email app, this is gonna be awesome for you. So you can use Spark's kind of native ones to try to be as Mac-like as possible. You can use, ironically, Apple's mail app sh uh, shortcuts, which are not very Mac-like, uh, unless you're talking like 1987, which apparently is when these made sense, but I don't think they make sense today. Anyway, people feel differently about this. Uh, you could use these. Uh, you can use Gmails, which I actually prefer. I think these are awesome, super quick, and I've just gotten used to them over the years. Or if you wanna customize it yourself, customize it yourself. All of these are available here, and I don't see a lot of email clients giving you this much control over your keyboard shortcuts, so I love to see it in Spark. And finally, bringing up the rear, we have a zip file on my desktop. And what is this? I'm just gonna double click it, and it unzips it. And what was exciting about that? Nothing really, right? Well, what's really nice is that the zip file itself is gone. It was th thrown in the trash. I just have whatever was unzipped. And so this is using an app called the Unarchiver, which you very well likely have installed. And one of the things that's nice about it is, is how many things that it can uh, unzip. But the thing we're really looking at is under extraction, there's the setting to, after successfully extracting an archive, move the archive to the trash. And this is so useful. I really like this. I think it's off by default, so you have to turn it on. But this is so nice because I really never, ever want the zip file. I never want the RAR file or whatever I've got. I want that just trashed. And so this saves me a step. It's a very little thing, but I find it really useful. So that is 10 apps, 10 little features that I really like. Uh, let me know if you like this video. I will try to make some more of them because I definitely have more ideas. But 10 was already a decent amount of work, so wanted to make sure you guys actually care about it, actually enjoy it, actually are getting some value out of it uh, before I go deeper. So let me know in the comments if it's useful. If there's other little things like this you want to share with the world, let other people know in the comments as well, and I'll see you here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.